Aprende inglés paso a paso. Lección 34. Nivel avanzado. Paso 1. Gramática 1. Straight to the grammar. So we're going to be working on the future perfect in the interrogative mm -hmm. and the passive voice. So Ejercicios a traducir. Translations. ¿Habrás hablado con él para las 5? Will you have spoken to him by 5 o'clock? Perfect. ¿Habrán dejado de fumar para el verano que viene? Will they have given up smoking by next summer? Will they have given up smoking by next summer? Great. ¿Ella se habrá casado para cuando tenga 30 años? Will she have got married by the time she's 30? Good. Or... Will she have gotten married by the time she's 30? Got, gotten, las dos valen en este caso. ¿Habrán desaparecido las marcas del bikini a tiempo para la boda? Will the tan marks have disappeared in time for the wedding? Good, one more time. Will the tan marks have disappeared in time for the wedding? Fantastic. ¿Habrás tenido tiempo de leer el informe para estas alturas de la semana que viene? Will you have had time to read the report by this time next week? Great. Will you have had time to read the report by this time next week? Next week, great. ¿Habrán derribado el edificio para cuando vuelva el alcalde? Will they have knocked the building down by the time the mayor gets back? Great. ¿Lo habrás preparado todo para cuando lleguen de la delegación de París? <laughs> Will you have prepared, prepared everything by the time they arrive from the Paris office? Great. Will you have prepared everything by the time they arrive from the Paris office? Instalado las líneas a estas alturas de la semana que viene. The lines will have been installed by this time. Next week. Next one. Habrán acabado la autopista para cuando tengan lugar las elecciones. The motorway will have been completed by the time the election takes place. Se habrá tomado la decisión a estas alturas de la semana que viene. The decision will have been made by this time next week. Se habrán talado todos los árboles para finales de mes. All the trees will have been cut down by the end of the month. Qué triste. Next one. Se habrá derribado el edificio para el viernes como muy tarde. The building will have been knocked down by Friday at the latest. Two more. Se habrá Habrán esquilado todas las ovejas para cuando vuelvas del mercado. All the sheep will have been shorn by the time you get back from the market. Last one. Se habrán limpiado todas las ventanas para cuando llegue el jefe de área. All the windows will have been cleaned by the time the area manager arrives. Good work, Alberto. Paso dos. Exprésate como un nativo. Okay. How is, well, to get to the point, ir al grano. Ejercicios a traducir. Okay. ¿Vas a ir al grano o qué? Are you going to get to the point or what? Are you going to get to the point or what? Good. Iré directamente al grano. I'll get straight to the point. I'll get straight to the point. Ve al grano, ¿vale? Get to the point, will you? Get to the point, will you? Good. No tenemos mucho tiempo, así que si pudieras ir directamente al grano, te lo agradecería. We don't have much time, so if you could get straight to the point, I'd be very grateful. Good. So So if you could get straight to the point, I'd be very grateful. Great. Fui directamente al grano y le pedí que él se casara conmigo. Wow. I got straight to the point and asked her to marry me. Wow. Very brave. <laughs> I got straight to the point and asked her to marry me. Good. Le pedí que fuera directamente al grano. I asked her to get straight to the point. I asked her to get straight to the point. Good. Hoy no tengo tiempo para tus anécdotas. Ve al grano, por favor. I don't have any time for your anecdotes today. Just get to the point, please. Good. Just get to the point, please. One more time. Just get to the point, please. Good. Ok. Entonces, no vamos a andar con rodeos. We're not gonna beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. Otra secu expresión secundaria. So, we'll get straight to the point and look at more examples. Ok. No te andes por las ramas. Ve al grano. Don't beat around the bush. Get to the point. Good. Le dije a ella que no se anduviera por las ramas y que fuera al grano. I told her not to beat around the bush and to get to the point. Good. I told her not to beat around the bush and to get to the point. Interrogué a un testigo ayer que no había manera de que fuera al grano. I cross examined a witness yesterday who just wouldn't get to the point. Fantastic. Déjame ir directamente al grano. Vamos a tener que trasladarnos. Let me get straight to the point. We're going to have to relocate. Let me get straight to the point. We're going to have to relocate. Good. Vale. Voy a ir directamente al grano. Tiene que hacerse de nuevo. Right. I'm going to get straight to the point. It needs to be redone. Good. Deja de dar rodeos y ve al grano. Stop waffling on and get to the point. Good. One more time. Stop waffling on and get to the point. Good. Stop waffling on and get to the point. Last one. No pretendo para ser abrupto, pero ¿tendrías la amabilidad de ir al grano, por favor? I don't mean to come across as abrupt, but could you kindly get to the point, please? Good. Could you kindly get to the point, please? Great work. Paso 3.
pronunciación. Corazón en inglés, ¿qué es? Heart. Heart. Ejercicios a traducir. Get to have the heart to do something. Un, una expresión, tener el coraje de hacer uh -huh. algo. And the second expression in these examples is to put your heart and soul into something, which is poner todo tu empeño en algo. Okay. okay? Now, remember, heart... Heart. Heart. Good. No tengo el coraje de decirle la verdad. I don't have the heart to tell her the truth. Good. I don't have the heart to tell her the truth. Great. Ella no tiene el coraje de decirle que su trabajo no es lo suficientemente bueno. She doesn't have the heart to tell him that his work isn't up to standard. Fantastic. No tengo el coraje de decirle a él que ya no estoy enamorado de él. I don't have the heart to tell him that I'm not in love with him anymore. Great. Ella no tuvo el coraje de decirle a él que no le gustaba nada el anillo. Uh -oh. she, she didn't have the heart to tell him that she hated the ring. She didn't have the heart to tell him that she hated the ring. Bad news there. <laughs> okay, next one. Ella puso todo su empeño en el proyecto. She put her heart in, and soul into the project. Good, one more time. She put her heart and soul into the project. Great. Puse todo mi empeño en la escultura, pero aún así mi profesora de arte dijo que la detestaba. I put my heart and soul into the sculpture, but my art teacher still said she hated it. Yes, good. Okay, next one. Ella puso todo su empeño en su trabajo, pero aún así no era lo suficientemente bueno. He put his heart and soul into his work, but it still wasn't up to standard. Good. He put his heart and soul into the work, or into his work, excuse me, but it still wasn't up to standard. Great. Now, two more expressions with heart, okay? To have a good heart, tener buen corazón, mm -hmm. and to have your heart in the right place, which is tener buenas intenciones. Me voy a casar con Kevin. Puede que no sea el hombre perfecto, pero tiene buen corazón. I'm going to marry Kevin. He may not be the perfect man, but he has a good heart. Great. Great. Okay. <laughs> sé que él lo hizo mal, pero sus intenciones no eran malas. Tiene buen corazón. I know he did wrong, but his intentions weren't bad. He has a good heart. Good. He has a good heart. Okay, great. Sé que no lo aceptas, pero te prometo que tiene buen corazón. I know you don't approve of him, but I promise, but I promise you he has a good heart. One more time. Good. I know you don't approve of him, but I promise you he has a good heart. I know you don't approve of him, but I promise you he has a good heart. Okay. Él da la impresión de ser un poco maleducado a veces, pero tiene buenas intenciones. He comes across as a bit rude sometimes, but his heart's in the right place. Good, and that's what's important, his heart's in the right place. A veces ella mete la pata por error, pero tiene buenas intenciones. Sometimes she puts her foot in it by mistake, but her heart's in the right place. Good, her heart is in the right place. Él siempre está metiendo la pata, pero no me importa porque tiene buenas intenciones. He's always putting his foot in it, but I don't mind because his heart's in the right place. Good, good. He's always putting his foot in it, but I don't mind because his heart's in the right place. Right place. Last one. Puede que él dé la impresión de ser estricto, pero tiene buenas intenciones. He may come across as, a, as a very strict, but his heart's in the right place. Fantastic. He may come across as very strict, but his heart's in the right place. Great work. See you in a second. Paso cuatro. Phrasal verbs. Okay, uh, to not feel up to something, which means no sentirse con ánimo o con fuerzas para hacer algo. Ejercicios mm. a traducir. No me siento con ánimo de salir esta noche. I don't feel up to going out tonight. Great, I don't feel up to going out tonight. Siento no haber ido a la fiesta. No me sentía con ánimo. I'm sorry I didn't make it to the party. I didn't feel up to it. Fantastic. ¿Estás segura de que te sientes con fuerzas? Are you sure you feel up to it? Great, are you sure you feel up to it? Good. Me temo que no me siento con fuerzas. Para hablar con nadie. I don't feel up to speaking to anyone, I'm afraid. I don't feel up to speaking to anyone, I'm afraid. Good. ¿Te apetece tomar un caldo caliente? Do you feel up to having some hot soup? Good. Do you feel up to having some hot soup? Great. Quería ir, pero al final no me sentía con fuerzas. I wanted to go, but in the end I didn't feel up to it. Fantastic. Now, more examples, but this time in, in terms of the Spanish, I just, I don't feel up to it. I don't, I don't want to read in Spanish, mm. okay? How about you read these sentences in Spanish, I'll read them in English. Okay, All right. perfect. Are you up to it? Yeah, definitely. Good. ¿Qué tal si damos un paseo? No tengo fuerzas. How about we go for a walk? Uh, I don't feel up to it. ¿Qué te parecería apuntarte a un curso de marketing? No me siento con ánimo. How about you sign up for a marketing course? Uh, I don't feel up to it. ¿Qué tal si salimos a tomar algo? No me siento con ánimo. How about we go out for a drink? Uh, I don't feel up to it. ¿Qué te parece si haces algo de trabajo en el jardín? No me siento con fuerzas. How about you do some yard work? I don't feel up to it. I don't blame him. I wouldn't feel up to doing some yard work either. Okay, next one. ¿Qué tal si vamos a ver esa, esa película? Nueva. No tengo fuerzas. How about we go see that new film? I don't feel up to it. ¿Qué te parece si vamos a por un café? No me siento con ánimo. How about we get a coffee? I don't feel up to it. Nobody feels up to anything in this paso. Okay, <laughs> last one. ¿Qué tal si me cuentas qué tal te encuentras? No me siento con 
ánimo en absoluto. How about you tell me how you feel? I really don't feel up to it. Great work, Alberto. I feel up to going to the next paso. Paso 5. Vocabulario. Okay, which is la cama, the bed. Yeah. Y bueno, y sus componentes, the, the parts of the bed and the bed, okay? Ejercicios a traducir. Más nos vale que compremos una nueva estructura de cama. Esta está rota. We'd better buy a new bed frame. This one's broken. Great. Más vale que cambies esas sábanas. Están sucísimas. You'd better change those bed sheets. They're filthy. Good. You'd better change those bed sheets. They're filthy. Great. Más le vale que cambie ese cabecero por otro. Está cayéndose a pedazos. He'd better replace that headboard. It's falling apart. Great. He'd better replace that headboard. It's falling apart. Más te vale que laves los edredones antes de hacer la cama. You'd better wash the duvets before you make the bed. Great. Más le vale que traiga más mantas. Hace un frío que pela. He'd better bring more blankets. It's freezing. Good. He'd better bring more blankets. It's freezing. Más les vale que le den la vuelta al colchón. They'd better turn over their mattress. Great. Okay, next one. Más te vale que compres fundas de almohada nuevas para esas almohadas. Esas, estas, perdona, están estropeadas. You'd better buy some new pillowcases for those pillows. These ones are ruined. Fantastic. More examples, this time with the passive voice. Okay. okay. Aún no se ha arreglado la estructura de la cama. The bed frame hasn't been fixed yet. Excellent. Hay que lavar la funda de la almohada antes de que se haga la cama. The pillowcase needs to be washed before the bed is made. Great. Estas almohadas se hicieron en Egipto. Hmm. These pillows were made in Egypt. These pillows were made in Egypt. Good. Okay. Hay que tirar ese redón a la basura. That duvet has to be thrown away. Great. Se ha Arregló el cabecero y se lavó la manta. The headboard was fixed and the blanket was washed. Good. The headboard was fixed and the blanket was washed. Great. Aquellas sábanas no se han lavado todavía. Those bed sheets haven't been washed yet. Fantastic. Last one. Ya se le he dado la vuelta al colchón. The mattress has already been turned over. Great work. Paso 6. Gramática 2. Okay, more grammar. Now we're going to be looking at more uses of yet. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if you haven't done something yet, you can say I haven't done it yet. Or you can say I have yet to do it in afirmativo. Ejercicios a traducir. Todavía no estoy convencido. I have yet to be convinced. Great. Todavía no han firmado el acuerdo. They have yet to sign the, the agreement. Good. They have yet to sign the agreement. Now, I'm going to say a sentence with I haven't done something yet with that structure. And you now translate it in English to the new structure. Okay? Okay. I haven't met anyone yet who knows this business better than I do. I've yet to meet someone who knows this business be better than I do. Great. He hasn't revealed his hand yet. He's yet to reveal his hand. Fantastic. The Conservative Party hasn't presented its election manifesto yet. The Conservative Party has yet to present its, its election manifesto. Good. The Conservative Party has yet to present its election manifesto. The PM hasn't made a statement yet. The PM has yet to make a statement. Good. Okay, last one. MPs haven't voted on the matter yet. MPs have yet to vote. On the matter. Great. MPs have yet to vote on the matter. Okay. Más usos de yet. Ahora cuando a no obstante, sin embargo, y pero se refiere. Se lo quiero contar, pero parece que nunca encuentro el momento. I want to tell her, yet I never seem to find the right moment. Good. Él fue muy convincente. Sin embargo, había algo en el que no me gustaba. He was very convincing, and yet there was something about him I didn't like. Great. Now, cuando a aún se refiere. Okay. More with yet. Aún tuvimos más problemas cuando pasamos la aduana. We experienced yet more problems when we went through customs. Great. Aún hay más preguntas que necesitan una respuesta. Yet more questions need to be answered. Fantastic. Now, more with yet. Ahora con yet again, que es una vez más. Okay. He suspendido el examen de conducir una vez más. I failed my driving test yet again. Great. Nos hemos perdido una vez más. We are lost yet again. Good. Last one. Una vez más toca hacer la declaración de la renta. Yet again, it's time to do our tax, tax return. Yet again, it's time to do our tax Tax return. Good work. Paso siete. B. 
verbos regulares. Ok, regular verbs time. Ok, the first verb is actuar, comportarse, interpretar un papel. ¿Qué es en inglés? To act. Good. La segunda, el segundo, perdona. El segundo verbo, gritar. To shout. Good. To shout. Great. Esperar. To expect. Ejercicios. A traducir. Cada día él se comporta. Every day he acts. Good. Ayer él se comportó. Yesterday he acted. Good. Últimamente él se ha comportado. Recently he's acted. Great. Siempre grito. I always shout. Anoche grité. Last night I shouted. Esta tarde he gritado. This afternoon I've shouted. This afternoon I've shouted. Good. <laughs> me lo suelo esperar. I normally expect it. Great. La semana pasada me lo esperaba. Last week I expected it. Good pronunciation, Alberto. Last one. A, largo, a lo largo del día lo he esperado. Throughout the day I've expected it. Fantastic. More examples. These ones are longer now. Gabi se comportó de forma rara a lo largo de toda la reunión. Gabi acted strangely throughout the whole meeting. Great. Nos esperamos este problema desde hace ya mucho tiempo. We've expected this problem for a while now. Ella me gritó cuando se dio cuenta de lo que estaba pasando. She shouted at me when she realized what was going on. Fantastic. Yo esperaba que él hiciera algo al respecto la semana pasada. Ahora es demasiado tarde. I expected him to do something about it last, last week. It's too late now. Fantastic. Phil actuó como enlace entre el estudio y los inversores. Phil acted as a link between the studio and the, and the investors. Good. Phil acted as a link between the studio and the investors. Great. Two more. Alguien gritó, fuera, cuando el ministro empezó a hablar. Someone shouted, get off, when the minister started speaking. Fantastic. Last one. No esperaba que él empezara a gritar y a comportarse como un idiota. Me dio tanta vergüenza. I hadn't expected him to start shouting and acting like, like a complete fool. I was so embarrassed. Good. I hadn't expected him to start shouting and acting like a complete fool. I was so embarrassed. Great work. See you in a second. Paso ocho. Comprensión auditiva. Ejercicios. Are you ready for a story, Alberto? Yep. Okay, this one's told from the perspective of Jacinta. Jacinta. I found it much harder to convince James than Trevor. You see, he has this way of looking at you that's quite off-putting. In fact, I was almost about to give up when I remembered the graph I had prepared. As soon as he saw the financial possibilities in China, he simply jumped at the idea. Now I have their backing. It's gonna be a lot easier to convince the board, okay? Okay. ¿Lo has entendido? Yep. Well, we'll find out now, okay? Questions. How can you describe the way Trevor looks at people? You can describe it as quite off-putting. Good. You can describe it as quite off-putting. In fact, what was Jacinta about to do? She was about to give up. She was about to give up. Great. Then what did she remember? She remembered the graph that she prepared. Good. She remembered the graph that she prepared. What did Trevor do as soon as he saw the financial possibilities in China? He simply jumped at the idea. He jumped at the idea. Great. Last question. Why is it going to be a lot easier to convince the board now? It's going to be a lot easier to convince the board now because Jacinta has both James's and Trevor's and Trevor's backing. Yeah, she has both of their backing. So Jacinta did a good job. Job, I guess. Okay. Yep. We'll move on to the next paso. Paso nueve. Error común. Oh, the, the superlative. Okay? okay. So, el menos caro en inglés no es the less expensive, sino the least expensive. Oh. Ejercicios. Sally fue quien menos dinero se gastó cuando se fue de viaje con sus amigas. Sally spent the least money when she went away with her friends. Good. Sally spent the least money when she went away with her friends. Sam fue quien menos alcohol bebió en la fiesta de cumpleaños de Fiona. Sam drank the least alcohol at Fiona's. Fantastic. Al final se compraron el coche más pequeño, pero también el menos caro. They eventually bought the, the smallest, but also the least expensive car. Good. One more time. They eventually bought the smallest, but also the least expensive Car. Great. El médico sugirió que si me gustaba el queso, debería comer los que tienen menos grasa. The doctor suggested that if I liked cheese, I should eat the ones with the least fat. Good. I should eat the ones with the least fat. Okay. Good, uh, good advice. Todas ellas hablan mucho. No sabría decir quién es la, menos, la que menos habla. All of them are very talkative. I couldn't say who speaks the least. Good. All of them are very talkative. I couldn't say who speaks the least. No me gustó ninguno de los pisos que vi, pero el que menos me gustó fue el último. 
último. I didn't like any of the flats I saw, but I liked the last one the least. Good. I liked the last one the least. Traba lengua. Good. Si mi sobrina es la candidata menos cualificada, no la contrates. If my niece is the least qualified candidate, then don't hire her. Good. One more time. If my niece is the least qualified candidate, then don't hire her. Great. Okay. Now, you read in Spanish, I'll read in English. Let's go. Megan fue la que más vestidos se compró cuando se fue de compras con sus hermanas. Megan bought the most dresses when she went shopping with her sisters. Al final, eligieron al miembro con más ventas del departamento. Eventually, they picked the team member with the most sales in the department. El mes pasado, Simon fue quien más coches vendió y su jefe le dio una bonificación. Last month, Simon sold the most cars and his boss gave him a bonus. Pedro consiguió el mayor número de votos y fue reelegido presidente de la comunidad de vecinos. Pedro got the most votes and was reelected as the president of the residence committee. Stephen contestó correctamente al mayor número de preguntas y ganó el viaje a París. Stephen answered the most questions correctly and won the trip to Paris. Mi sobrina Violeta es la que más aceitunas y patatas fritas come cuando la familia se reúne los domingos. Oh, Violeta, okay. <laughs> My niece Violeta eats the most olives and crisps when the family gets together on Sundays. Last one. En Navidad es cuando más echo de menos a mi familia. Christmas is when I missed my family the most. Good work. Paso 10. El repaso. ¿Lo habrás preparado todo para cuando lleguen la de la delegación de París? Will you have prepared everything by the time they arrive from the Paris office? Fantastic. Se habrá derribado el edificio para el viernes como muy tarde. The building will have been knocked down by Friday at the least at the latest. Good. The building will have been knocked down by Friday at the latest. Good. Se habrá tomado la decisión a estas alturas de la semana que viene. The decision will have been made by this time next week. Excellent. Iré directamente al grano. I'll get straight to the point. Great. Fui directamente al grano y le pedí que se casara conmigo. I got straight to the point and asked her to marry me. Very brave. Good. Le dije a ella que no se anduviera por las ramas y que fuera al grano. I told her not to beat around the bush and to get to the point. I told her not to beat around the bush and to get to the point. Great. Ella puso todo su empeño en el proyecto. She put her heart and soul into the project. Fantastic. A veces ella mete la pata por error, pero tiene buenas intenciones. Sometimes she puts her foot in it by mistake, but her heart's in the right place. Place. Great. Siento no haber ido a la fiesta. No me sentía con ánimo. I'm sorry I didn't make it to the party. I didn't feel up to it. Good. ¿Qué te parecería apuntarte a un curso de marketing? No me siento con ánimo. How about you sign up for a marketing course? I don't feel up to it. Good. I don't feel up to it. Great. ¿Te apetece tomar un caldo caliente? Do you feel up to having some hot soup? Good. Do you feel up to having some hot soup? Good. Más te vale que laves los edredones antes de hacer la cama. You'd better wash the tubes before you make the bed. Great. Good pronunciation. Ya se le ha dado la vuelta al colchón. The mattress has already been turned over. Great. Más le vale que cambie ese cabecero por otro. Está cayéndose a pedazos. He'd better replace the headboard. It's falling apart. Good. Now, reformular frases con to have yet to. Ok. Ok. La gramática que practicamos antes. I haven't met anyone yet who knows this business better than I do. I've yet to meet someone who knows this business better than I do. Fantastic. MPs haven't voted on the matter yet. MPs have yet to vote on the matter. Good. The PM hasn't made a statement yet. The PM has yet to make a statement. Fantastic. Ahora tú en castellano y yo en inglés. Ella me gritó cuando se dio cuenta de lo que estaba pasando. She shouted at me when she realized what was going on. No esperaba que él empezara a gritar y a comportarse como un idiota. Me dio tanta vergüenza. I hadn't expected him to start shouting and acting like a complete fool. I was so embarrassed. Phil actuó como enlace entre el estudio y los inversores. Phil acted as a link between the studio and the investors. Me resultó mucho más difícil convencer a James que a Trevor. I found it much harder to convince James than Trevor. En cuanto vio las posibilidades económicas en China, enseguida le encantó la idea. As soon as he saw the financial possibilities in China, he simply jumped at the idea. El médico sugirió que si me gustaba el queso, debería comer los que tienen menos grasa. The doctor suggested that if I liked cheese, I should eat the ones with the least fat. Al final se compraron el coche más pequeño, pero también el menos caro. They eventually bought the smallest, but also the least expensive car. Last example. Si mi sobrina es la candidata menos cualificada, no la contrates. If my niece is the least qualified candidate, then don't hire her. You got it, Alberto. See you next week. Si te ha gustado, no dudes en suscribirte al canal de YouTube y seguirnos en Facebook y redes sociales. Hasta el próximo vídeo.